Hey there, everybody. Today we're recapping an American action film, Crank 2, High Voltage. Spoilers ahead. What do you do when your heart is taken by the Chinese triad? It's ridiculous. Well, Crank 2 will show you what to do. So after falling down to the ground from a helicopter, Chev Chelios lands amid an intersection. Some gangsters then scrape him off the street and remove him from the site. Chev awakens in a makeshift hospital, where surgeons are taking his heart as Johnny Vang looks on. His chest is fitted with an artificial heart, as his real one is handed over to Johnny Vang in a red container. Sometime later, Chev wakes up and finds out that he's being harvested for body parts as two guys hint at taking his, wait for it, f***s next. God, now, we know Chev Chelios is a stone-cold badass, but what we don't know is that he's extra strong and even more determined with a prosthetic heart. He makes a quick work of both the guys, then notices that an external battery pack is linked to him. He then flees in what looks like to be a gang hideout slash brothel. After disabling several guards outside the building, he proceeds to find the whereabouts of Johnny Vang by physically interrogating a thug. The thug caved in and said that Johnny Vang is at the Cypress Social Club. So Chev quickly hotwires a nearby vehicle, but then he starts feeling weak and notices the external battery pack is still attached to him. Chev finds a way to call Doc Miles, who informs him that he's been equipped with an Avacor artificial heart and explains the system's mechanism. Sure, Doc, no problem. Miles warns Chev that after the external power pack is depleted, the internal battery will take over and he'll have 60 minutes until the device stops operating. Miles also adds that he must get an actual heart quickly, preferably his own, because the artificial one wouldn't last that long. Upon hearing that, Chev begins his race against time as more thugs approach his vehicle. Now, while speeding through the tarmac, Chev comes across some guys in a car who admire the car he's stolen. They chat and try to tempt him to a race. When it looks like Chev is finally given into the idea of a race, he crashes his vehicle, shattering the external battery pack. Chev then instructs his newfound car buddies to put jumper wires on him to charge the internal battery. You wanna give me a jump? Surprised and reluctant at first, but eager to see what happens next, they yield. Chev then arrives at the social club and is greeted by the sudden appearance of Rhea. Before we go on, like the video, smash the subscribe button, and turn on that notification bell to join our expendable squad. A prostitute of the social club. Looking for Vang, he evacuates every person from the building but loses Vang, who exits the club just in time to escape from a visible angry Chev. Chev picks up Rhea, who suddenly adores Chev for saving her life, and is about to leave her in the search of Vang when he suddenly reports that she knows exactly where Vang's headed. Rhea proceeds to escort him to the strip club where Vang's hiding. Now at the club, Vang's been accosted by Chico and his henchmen. The group seems to own the club and they're interested in what Vang has in his box. Chico attempts to convince Vang to give him the box and details. And to show his appreciation for Japanese culture, he goes a step further by even offering to make sushi for Vang. As it turns out, the sushi's made from human elbows. Vang's so impressed that he decides to cut a deal with Chico. You can make a deal, uh. Meanwhile, Chev reunites with Eve, who's now working as a dancer in the club. Chev announces his presence in the club by hauling a thug into the room where Vang and Chico were going through the details of their new contract. Chev tries to break up a fight brewing between Rhea, his newfound mistress, and Eve, his longtime lover. But as he tries to stop their fight and explain the situation to both of them, Chico enters the room and confronts Chev. He informs the rest of the gang that they need to bring in Chev alive. Both parties engage in a shootout, throwing the club into a state of disarray. Chev comes out victorious. But Vang manages to slip away during the shootout. Now, after the events at the club, Chev discovers that a mafia dubbed El Haran, the ferret, intends to assassinate him. But he doesn't find out why. He goes to grab Eve, and just as they start to leave the club, Eve knocks Rhea out with a glass jar. As Chev exits the building with Eve, he's met by cops, who immediately try to take him in. The situation looks very sticky for Chev, as what looks to be seven cops have him surrounded and begin beating him to the ground. Eve distracts some police officers and buys Chev some time with her screaming and yelling. The distraction puts Chev in a position to overpower the police officers and leave the area in a police vehicle. In the vehicle, Chev and Eve begin to catch up. 
Eve narrates how she saw a video on the internet of a dude who fell 14,000 feet from a chopper and didn't die. And he lives! She also complains that he's failed to contact her in the past three months, as she brings him up to date with other happenings in their strange world. Suddenly, the red-headed stripper from the club, who was already in the vehicle before Chev and Eve broke in, introduces herself by sexually touching Eve, who is sat next to her. And the stripper seems extremely fascinated by Eve's body. She tries to get it on with Eve in the back seat, but Eve's not in the mood. Meanwhile, Chev seems to have found a charger for his battery, as he continually electrocutes himself with a police-issued taser that he acquired during his brawl with the cops. Chev then states that he has to find Vang. A lot of things have changed since you died. The name sounded familiar to the stripper, so she informs him that Vang is at the Hollywood racetrack. Feeling more comfortable, she proceeds to free herself from the cuffs, and again attempts to delve further into Eve's anatomy. Upon seeing the stripper free, Eve begs her to undo her cuffs too, and the stripper doesn't hesitate in freeing her as well, hoping that her kind gesture would encourage Eve to get busy with her. And that leads to disappointment, as Eve knocks her out when she's released from the cuffs. Need to find that slot from the club, the one with the red collar. Chev then calls the doc using Eve's phone, and Miles tells him that he'd be able to fit Chev's heart back if he can get it from Vang. The doc also explains how he lost his license as a heart surgeon along with why Chev still remains alive even after destroying his battery pack. While on their way to the Hollywood racetrack, the trio ran into a group of protesters. We're not sure what this scene's for, but the protesters appear to be unpaid s workers who are requesting appropriate remuneration for their services. Anyways, moving forward. One of the hookers swings her breasts on the windshield of a police vehicle, but we'll let that slide. On his way to the racetrack, Chev encounters Venus, the brother of Chev's deceased partner, Kalo. Kalo? And he helps Chev escape some cops on his motorcycle. And while on the bike, Venus explains that he has full body Tourette. And Chev informs Venus that El Huron was engaged in his brother's death to get his assistance. Venus's body condition causes him to lose control of the motorcycle, making the pair crash by the side of the road. Chev starts to lose energy again at the horse track. But another phone call to Doc Miles informs him that friction, more specifically skin contact, will generate static electricity, which will charge the internal battery. It's not gonna hurt. Meanwhile, Eve arrives at the Hollywood racetrack and just in time too, as she saves Chev from a sticky situation with some cops and an elderly lady. Chev explains the situation to her and luckily, she gets what he wants. The two then proceed to have intercourse in the middle of the racetrack, despite being surrounded by people, causing enough friction to charge his heart. Chev then notices Vang in the audience and abandons a naked Eve in pursuit of him. The crowd is more pleased with the show that they put on than the actual race. However, Vang manages to escape Chev's grasp again, this time by a hair's breadth. Chev is about to be apprehended by security when Dom Kim arrives in a limo and rescues Chev. Get in! He informs him that Poon Dong, a major leader of the triads, requires a heart transplant and has chosen Chev's heart to replace his because Chev has what is supposedly the strongest heart, because he was able to survive the Chinese poison from the first movie. Don Kim also explains El Huron's role in the whole situation. But when Chen tries to leave, Don Kim tells him that he plans to offer Chev to Poon Dong for a reward. In a rough and tough battle, Chev manages to kill Don Kim and his henchmen in the limo. Chicken. After the battle, Chev exits the limo and recharges to what you could imagine is full capacity at a nearby transformer, then takes off to continue looking for Vang in his heart. So meanwhile, at El Huron's camp, Chico, who managed to escape death by the hands of Chev, narrates how he was lucky to survive Chev's ruthless onslaught of his gang members. El Huron is visibly livid by the tale, and Chico ends by removing both his nipples at El Huron's behest. So after escaping from the racetrack, Eve meets up with her ex-lover, Randy, who tries to convince her to turn herself in or lay low with him. Eve's in no mood for his theatrics and knocks Randy out when he tries to hit her. Unfortunately, she's soon apprehended by the cops. Venus watches as her arrest goes down while he's trying to make a call at a payphone. Moments later, we find out that Venus called Orlando for help in taking El Huron down. Orlando, I need your help. Orlando agrees and the two decide on a location for their rendezvous. And while searching for Vang, Chev joins an ambulance and takes a new battery pack for his prosthetic heart. He then sees Johnny Vang on the street outside. So he gets out of the ambulance and a gunfight and foot chase erupts. This time, Chev subdues Vang, only to find out that his heart isn't in the box. 
With Vang on the floor, Chev calls the doc and finds out that his heart has been transplanted some three weeks ago. Miles tells him that his heart is in pristine condition, beating inside Pudong's chest. Don't worry about it. I got people on the street. Doc has a plan, but Chev wants to do things his way. Just as Chev is about to land the final blow on Vang, a gunshot opens Vang's head. Out of nowhere, Chico appears, holding up the gun that shot Vang, while one of Chico's henchmen uses a blunt weapon to knock Chev out. So in the next scene, we see a heart beating inside a chest, and the owner of this chest is Pu Dong, who seems very pleased with his new heart. He's so happy that he dances to the beat of his heart as he passes a red light district. He then spots Doc Miles' secretary, Dark Chocolate, and they both disappear into a building. Okay, baby. Yeah. Next scene, we see a young Chev Chelios and his mother as guests on a talk show. The host and audience at the show take a look at the troubled childhood of young Chev. Apparently, he was a very troublesome kid and committed several crimes. The host tries to find out why he acts the way he does. And as the show goes for a break, Chev is brought back to the present. When he regains consciousness, he finds himself being whisked away by Chico and his men to Catalina Island, where El Huron awaits him. Venus reunites with Rhea and Orlando, and they all go to find Chev. Meanwhile, Eve's being interrogated by the cops for the whereabouts of Chev. However, she makes bail and is released. So on Catalina Island, Chev is brought to El Huron, but not before Chico and his men torture him first. He learns that El Huron is the brother of Ricky and Alex Verona, both who were brutally murdered by Chev. I was he born with another name. El Huron then proceeds to show Chev Ricky's disembodied head, which is in a fluid-filled box, and says that Ricky's head is being kept artificially alive, not forever, but long enough so that he can watch El Huron kill Chev. So El Huron proceeds to beat the back of Chelios. But he gets interrupted when Orlando, Venus, and Rhea soon arrive before him as reinforcements. A gunfight begins, with Venus shooting El Huron in the arm, and the shooting continues with the majority of El Huron's soldiers being killed. In the middle of the shooting, Chev tries to strangle El Huron but is interrupted by Chico in a fist fight. In the end, he overpowers Chico and fatally stabs him with a fluorescent bulb. Venus tries to go after El Huron but his men block him and he fights them off using nunchucks. Meanwhile, back at Doc's apartment, Dark Chocolate lures Poondong into the room where the Doc awaits for him with a syringe ready to put him to sleep. Uh -oh. Back on the island, Chev finds Ricky's head out of the box. He shares a few last words before kicking it into a nearby water fountain. Upon witnessing this, El Huron gets mad and starts making his way to Chev. Wanting to shoot him, Chev falls to his knees, already feeling himself getting weak. Just as El Huron's about to pull the trigger, Venus pushes him, and the two go tumbling down the stairs and engage in a fist fight. Now with Venus buying time... Chev climbs a nearby electric pole and clutches a pair of live wires to recharge himself, only to be caught on fire by the tremendous current. He returns fully charged and pummels El Huron to death. He mistakes Rhea as Eve and kisses her, unwittingly setting her ablaze due to a delusion created by the electric currents. The movie ends with Chev ablaze, who then goes over to the camera and raises his middle finger to the audience. Doc Miles replaces Chev's heart during the final credits, while Eve watches hopefully. His eyes open up and his heart monitor shows normal activity. Not the perfect ending, but then again, this movie is crazy and full of weird stuff, so we don't mind it. Venus is probably safe somewhere and would roll out once he's needed in a third installment of this movie. So, this was a review of Crank High Voltage, which was produced by Lionsgate Films and features Jason Statham as Chev Chelios, Amy Smart as Eve Leiden, and Clifton Collins Jr. as Jesus El Huron Verona. Crank High Voltage was the sequel to the 2006 film Crank directed by Mark Neveldine and Brian Taylor. See you guys around in our next review. Thanks for watching.